So I would like to tell you a story, the story of a Roman princess whose name was Galla Placidia, who started as a princess, married the king of the gods, became queen of the gods, and then later on empress of the Western Roman Empire. Long story, impressive career. And I'll have this story told to you by Galla Placidia's husband, the king of the gods, Athawulf the Wolf. Oh, I am Athawulf, prince of the gods, brother of Valaric, great king who conquered Rome, and king of the gods myself, who married Roman princess Galla Placidia, and uh, who I hoped one day to rule the Roman Empire, but that was not to happen. Not everything that one hopes to be happens, and so I am telling you this story from where I am now, in hell, a story that happened long ago, and I've been here for quite a long time, but it's okay, it's a story that I still remember very well at that time. Of adventures, battles, sieges, loves, and all the rest. So, it all starts with the uh, Visigoths, my people, ruled by my brother, King Alaric, a great king, and we moved all over the plains of Europe, fighting battles, trying to settle some place, finding places where we stayed, and sometimes sacking cities, and, you know, it was a difficult period. Uh, you listen to me from far away in the future. It was, I think, thousands of years in the year past. And it was not an easy life. We were looking for a place where to settle, settle with our families and to have some rest, to have a kingdom where we could stay, we could live and we could prosper. But of course, on one side, there was other tribes, barbarians, Pashigas, to the Roman lands, and of course the Romans were not so happy to have their lands. They saw us as invaders. We thought we would, we would have been friends, maybe, but uh, or maybe take over. Why not? It's life. Life goes like that. So, um, the time when this story starts, we had settled in north east of the region called Italy. Uh, the Romans were still very strong and they had a general, someone named Stilico, maybe you have heard that name, he was the Magister Militum, <laughs> at that time I was learning also Latin, my native language is a Germanic language, I'm speaking to you in this strange language that I think you call it English, but it's not so different from the language we spoke in our age, but you know from hell we can, we have possibilities that we didn't have as living creatures up <laughs> where you are now, I figure. So, we were in northern Italy. The Romans were stopping us there with Stilico, the Roman army. The Roman army was very powerful. Not many years before, another Gothic king, whose name was Rudiger, uh, you maybe you know him, Radagaisus, is the Latin version of his name. He tried to attack Rome and he was stopped by Stilicon, and the whole Gothic nation that he was leading was destroyed. Not <laughs> Stilicon was not a guy that you could play with. So, story starts really when we started getting messages from Ravenna. Ravenna was the place where the Roman Emperor was living, not anymore in Rome. There was a guy called Honorius. Not, not. Um, a general, not a good leader. Anyway, we heard this news, Stilico is dead. Stilico is dead? What are we? So people coming from Ravenna, warriors, soldiers, barbarians, Romans, all kind of people say, what are we? Stilico was killed by whom? By Honorius, the emperor. We don't know why he did that. It was very stupid, but we heard that Stilico was betrayed and he died as a brave man, 
as he was. I'm sure he was. I met him sometimes in hell. He is here too. And, uh, we <laughs> we don't fight anymore in hell. We just say hello and uh, and that's it. And um, so what happened? No more Stilico, no more Roman army. No more Roman army. The way to Rome is open. So we look at each other, <laughs> the Gothic, the gods, my brother, myself, the other princess say, it's, it's a miracle. Let's go. And so, and so we went, we took the whole army, the people, the women, the old men, the oxen, the cattle, the sheep, the horses, everything. Ooh. And we marched towards Rome. There was nobody stopping us. Unbelievable. We arrived in front of Rome and you should have seen Rome. I mean, think of me, I was a barbarian. Of course, I've never seen such a big city in my life. None of us had ever seen anything like that. Can you imagine? The city of Rome, the biggest city in the world, the most powerful city in the world, the most beautiful city in the world. I, I, was, I was there. And, mm, what can that be? And how can it be that we, two barbarians, Myself, Prince Athawulf, my brother, King Alaric, to besiege such a big, immense, and powerful city that it was, because there was almost nobody defending it on the on the fortification. It was a few soldiers, but not nothing that could stop us. So we stopped there for a while. Now, we could have taken the city rather easily, but we waited. It's a very good. It we we didn't want really to to make too big a disaster. We just stopped the supply of grain to the city. The grain they were getting grain from Africa by ship, and so we said, "Stop! No, no, no more grain to the city." These people coming from Africa say, "What do we do? We do give the grain to us. We're very happy." And so, after a month or two. The Romans were starving, they were hungry, and they were, we could, we could perceive the situation. They, what can it be? We, the Romans, we're so powerful, so big, such a big city, and these silly barbarians in front of us, they are besieging our city. Some moment, so one of the doors opening up, and a column of people coming up to our tents where we're staying, was a guy who dressed in a toga. You know what a toga is. Toga is a former Roman dress with golden bands. I came to, I want to see the king of the Visigoths. Who are you? I am the emperor of the Romans. Say, mister, we know, we know that the emperor is somewhere else. <laughs> Not in Rome. I am the new emperor. Who made you this senate? Okay, want to see our king come. And so they brought they brought this man. They told us that my name is Emperor Priscus Attalus. And so I came to see King Galaric. King Galaric, my, my brother was a tough guy, you know, like who are you? I am the emperor. What do you want from me? I I want you to leave. So why why do you want me to leave you? Listen, King, if you don't leave, the Romans will come out of the city and sweep you out because the Romans are very, very numerous. You know, Emperor, so called Emperor. The thicker the hay, the easier it is mowed. You know what kind of guy was my brother. On sentence like this, he could make an Emperor from this height. Ooh, like this. And so this guy. Okay, well, I'm, I'll be, we'll be, we'll be, we'll, you, you will see. And he left. After a few weeks, they opened the doors. We didn't, we didn't need to assault the city. So the doors were open. And say, uh, we said, okay, guys, warriors, Visigoths, people, listen to, to us, to the king and to his brother, me, Athawulf. The city is ours. You can just walk in and take everything you want because you are the winners and you the winner to the winners go the spoils take the gold the silver the bronze the whatever but you are warriors you have the honor 
warriors. So don't kill the old men, don't kill the children, don't kill the women. And women, you, it, it, okay, we know, but take it easy because a good warrior does not take a woman if she doesn't want. Is it okay? Yes, king, with yes, prince. And it was not, they, they, they behaved well, I, I can say. Uh, you know, as things go, but there was some resistance, and people took swords and said, We fight the goats. And the, so, but uh, on, the, on the whole, I think my people behaved beautifully. They didn't kill people, they didn't rape women sometimes, and they took what was right. Um, what they, they, they had to have it. It was the right to have the gold, the silver, the bronze, and, and everything. And now the story is that I was in the city with my warriors and said, well, that's a beautiful palace there, who lives there? So we went there, there were some guys with lances in front of the door, and they, we could say they were vandals, vandals, barbarians, not Romans, they are but barbarians like us, but a different kind of people. So they were, we were friendly with the vandals, Stilico himself had been a vandal. And so we went there and I said, who are you? Uh, we are the bodyguards of Princess Placidia. <laughs> and uh, where is Princess Placidia? She's inside. We are guarding the door. Uh, and, uh, would you like to let us in? Well, Mr. Uh, you can, you can, I, I am I am Atawulf, Prince of the Gods. Prince, our job is to defend Princess Placidia. Please understand. Okay, I understand you guys, and so I can tell you that uh, Princess Placidia will not be harmed, will not be touched, and will be protected. Okay, good. And so say, please come in, we show you where the princess is. Normal, these guys were good warriors, but you don't have to, to sacrifice your life if there is no need. So we went inside this beautiful palace with uh, the curtains, uh, columns, uh, marbles, and mirrors, and paintings, and carpets. Ooh, what a place! But, well, I can tell you, the most beautiful thing that was in this palace, I can tell you, <laughs> stumbled in front of the princess. Ah, <laughs> I told you, what happened when I saw Rome for the first time, but there was just nothing in comparison to what happened to me when I saw the princess for the first time. Look, um, you know, and I don't want to exaggerate, I mean, Galla, then I came to know her rather well, of course, I married her, but let's go step by step. Galla was a beautiful girl, by miss, but was not that, it was the the way she was a princess, she was doing everything like a princess. She moved like a princess, she spoke like a princess, she was dressed like a princess, she, everything. And she could scratch her head and scratch her head like a princess, with kind of thing. And I saw her smiling at me. I mean, I, at the time, I, I'm, a, I'm a soul in hell now, but at the time, I don't think I was an ugly guy. I was, I was a prince and was well dressed and, and all those things. And so I saw a smile from this princess and I, and, uh, I told her, are you a princess Galla? And she said, noble prince, I am princess Galla Placidia, daughter of Emperor Theodosius and uh, sister to the ruling emperor Honorius, and I'm placing myself under your protection, prince. <laughs> Say, princess, you are under my protection. You will not harm, you will not be touched. Nobody will do anything wrong to you. Mm. And she made a smile. <laughs> wow. Well, okay, that's how I met her, but the story is longer than this, there are many things, but anyway, she was very happy to come with us, with the gods. Why? It's a long story that she told me later on, but she was in a very difficult position because, you know, 
the Romans, uh, nice people sometimes, bad people sometimes. So they, for instance, in this big mess of the siege they were looking for, was what we call a scapegoat, somebody to fault. How is it that the gods are winning against the Romans? Somebody must have been betraying us. And so uh, I'm serious. I came to know the story. Prasida was risking to be faulted for what was happening because she was... Um, she had been adopted by Stilicon, a long, a long story, but not, not, let's not go into that. Anyway, she absolutely wanted to leave Rome and never heard about it and, you know, anymore. And so she would say, Princess, we are living in the city, we are full of gold and uh, we are very happy. Would you come with us? Of course, <laughs> please come. And where were we going? Well, the story is, what do we do now? We were in Rome, but uh, really we could not stay in Rome forever. No. What we saw was that so much grain was coming from Africa to feed the Romans. So we said, why don't we go to Africa? It has to be a very rich place and it must be wonderful so we can live there. So we spoke to the people who were manning these ships and said, hmm. We prepare a fleet for you and we meet at the southern tip of Italy. You walk there and when you arrive at the end of the peninsula, you find the fleet waiting for you. Pay us, of course, and we take you to Africa. And the way is open. There is some Roman fighters there, but it should not be very difficult as you were tough and, and numerous. So my brother Alaric said, let us go, people. Now we are rich and we go to a beautiful place. We had to walk all the way to the end of Italy. From there we crossed the sea and we settled in Africa. So sweet land, grain, fruits, um, beautiful weather and we stayed there. I think it was a mistake, but at the time, you know, I thought, well, maybe it is a good idea. How do I know that? And we marched down. It was long. We thought it was not. We didn't think it was so long. And winter was coming. It was cold and situation a little bit difficult. But we we, we were used to to march and uh, and in a, in a certain way it was a beautiful march because I still remember this empty world. There was no nobody there. We were walking mountains and valleys and forests and abandoned cities, fortifications, ruined streets, what a strange world, no one stopping us, but it was difficult to find food, we had been taking with us as much food as we could, but it was not easy, but one thing was the best thing of this trip was Galla, Galla Placidia, the princess, she was coming with us, she was under my protection, of course, what but the beautiful thing about Galla was not that she was coming with us, but she loved it. She enjoyed being with us. So you could should have seen her. She was so happy. Think, think about her. She had lived all, all her life secluded in a palace. Not so fun. And so to have these new things, new people, new ideas, new ways of doing things. She was getting friendly with the, with the Gothic women. She was learning the Gothic language and she loved it. <laughs> everybody could see, everybody loved her because you could see that she was happy. She was not haughty princess or oh, I am a princess, you're barbarian. No, at all. Please teach me how to cook. Fantastic. And she liked me that, that much. Well, I can tell you I had already a wife, but these things can be arranged. Friendly, in a friendly manner. There's, uh, sometimes you change these things. Women, men, they can change partner. And uh, one night <laughs> during that trip to the southern tip of Italy, the princess wanted me in her tent. And okay, <laughs> you know what happened. And so we went. Now, also the sea in front of us, the sea, and we knew that there was Africa, there was Africa in front of us, not immediately, but, and the ships, 
Well, something had gone wrong. They told us, I'm sorry, but there has been a storm. Something went wrong. We were betrayed. Never mind that. Um, somebody wanted us to do this long trip, luring us with the idea that there were those ships there, but there was no, no such a thing. No ships. Not a few, but not what we needed. So what do we do? I think that Alaric, my brother, was so disappointed that he had something bad to his heart, and he was older than me, and he died, unfortunately, very unfortunately. He was a good man, a good king, and um, he cared for his people, but we had to bury him there. What we did, we dug a tomb in the riverbed of a river, was, went through there, was, the name was Buzento. You still have this river in your time. And we buried him there. Um, first we deviated the river, then we buried with the gold. His, his um, share of the gold, of the silver. And then we brought the river back on its bed. And people knew that. Lots of people have been looking for that gold. And it has not been found. You know, I could tell you where it is. <laughs> what I want. You have to look for it. Maybe if you are lucky, you can find it because it is still buried under the river bank. Never mind that. And we went back up. No, no, no other way. No ships. We had to walk. And where do we go? It was, as I said, it was a hard time. Hard for our, our old man, hard for our children. And we arrived to back to Rome, but Rome, we saw immediately things had changed. There was a strong Roman army defending the walls, so no way to attack Rome again. So we skipped Rome, we went, keep going north, and the uh, Romans were following us with a strong army. There was a guy, the new Magister Militum, the new general, Constantius, and um, I was the king, he was the general, so we found an agreement, okay, we won't fight you, you won't fight us, and then uh, he let us pass. And yeah, our idea at this point, that with the new king, it was me, I was now at this point, I was, I was declared king by the council of the, of the tribe, tribes, the Gothic tribes, and we, the idea was to try to find a place outside Italy, in Spain, Espania. In Spain, and we moved in that direction. And as a king, we found a place in southern Gallia or France where I buried Princess Placidia and Narbonne. Wonderful, wonderful. You remember that guy, Priscus Attalus, I told you, was the so called emperor. So I had him come from Rome, promised a little gold. Fine. I said, Mr. Atalus, you are the emperor. Yeah, but maybe. So you will sing at our marriage. Oh, why not? <laughs> and and uh, at our marriage, mine and Gallas, what a wonderful girl. We had that emperor singing. Yeah, that was good. But then we moved. We marched. It was hard. No? The Romans were not happy about having us there, so they harassed us. Push us all the way to to Spain, and then with uh, some quarreling in our ranks, uh, we should fight the Romans. No, they are too strong. We have to find a place to settle. Now we want to kill them. No. And so we went to Spain, and there was a fortress in Spain, which at the time was called Bargino. And uh, now I think you called it, uh, you called the, you call it Barcelona. Call it Barcelona, and, uh, and we settled there. But, well, it was a fortress, but it was essentially abandoned. There was nobody there defending it. And we settled, and we had a child with God. Now, to finish this story, because this is the last part. Well, not, but not finished for Galla. Finished for me, unfortunately. But this baby, Galla told me, we have to call him Theodosius. Theodosius. The name of the last great emperor of the whole Roman Empire. Galla's father. Can you think what she had in mind? She was now, having married the king of the gods, she was the queen of the gods. Happy, very happy about that. 
but uh, she was still a Roman princess. So she could became, become empress. And the boy would become emperor of the Romans because he was the, the son of a Roman princess or maybe empress. And he would also become the king of the gods because he was my son, king of the gods, Athos, the wolf. Can you think about that? Can you imagine what that would mean? It meant that the Romans and the gods stay together and form a single nation, a new empire, a new prosperity, a new greatness. That was me. What a girl could have these ideas. I, I initially said, what? Is it, why, what, what are you telling me this? And I said, all right, Gala, we could do it. You, you think about that. She said, we can do it. We can stop the war and live together, friends in harmony, just like you, Ataulf, and me, Gala. I got married and we're sharing our blood with this baby. And we can do the same. Two people getting together, sharing their blood, living in peace. That was the top of my life, the best moment in my life. Better than when I saw Rome for the first time. And then everything went wrong. I'm sorry about that. We all have dreams, but then the baby died. It happens. Then some idiot killed me because they wanted to fight the Romans. And they always said, no, we don't fight the Romans. We're our friends, but a stupid people. And then, and then with me killed, Gala was not anymore. She was still the queen, but some people didn't want, want a new king. There's a lot of st stories that I could not do anything because I was dead. And finally, the Romans arrived with this guy, Constantius, with a tough guy, with the Romans, with a lot of troops, and say, so you guys, what are you doing? Nice to see you. <laughs> and the new king was a good guy after, after some movement. New guy was called Valla. Valla said, great master of armies, what can we do for you? <laughs> Give me back Galla Placidia, please. And Galla had to go. <laughs> she was not, she could not stay. She would not stay, and she had her career, but uh, at that point she married Constantius. She had children from him. She became empress, adventurous life. That I, I know it because I was seeing it, it from here. I would, I would have liked to be there, but unfortunately not. And um, I saw it was the, the dream of getting together the Visigoths and the Romans did not come to pass. But, not then, but then he arrived, later on, later on, in time, eventually, there were no more Visigoths, no more Romans, no more barbarians, we were all the same people, in Spain, in Italy, in what then was called France, earlier was called Gallia, and, uh, and so that's uh, the way history moves, and we can try to do our best, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work, but nothing can prevent us to have beautiful dreams. And sometimes these dreams come true, even though it may take some time. And so this is the story of Gala Placidia told to you by Athaulf, the wolf, who was king of the gods and husband to a Roman princess.